Maddie in the morning, Maddie in the morning. Maddie in the morning, Maddie in the morning. Maddie in the morning. What, what, what? Wait, hold on. What time is it? To whatever time it is, it's morning. It's nine o'clock somewhere, bitch. Get in here and watch the show. Wendy, Wendy, Bartholomew, Orenthal, Rufus, Clyde, Theodos, Pookie, El Dover, Jason the Giant Peach, Hezekiah Walker Williams, Senior the Third. Okay? And baby, let me tell you something. Baby, when I was sitting there watching this Wendy Williams, um, the movie, I did feel like that the movie was very much so um was dull. I thought the movie was dull. What for me told the story was the fucking uh documentary that she did. The right after that followed right after. Bitch, let me tell you something. I was so glued into that woman's life. I learned a lot of things about her which made me have a um which made me have a newfound respect for her. And I made a post on my Instagram and I and I and I'll take you on these posts and Mo, you don't have them because I didn't I didn't load them up into the system. But what I did was I, I made posts like as it was going on. Now the first thing I saw when it first came on, I did see that the trade took her car. He blasted a nut in her. He ran up her credit, her credit, and he left her. Yes. Right? And this is what let me know um, that if we, if Wendy ain't one of us, she damn sure one of us. <laughs> if she ain't one of the girls, she damn sure one of the motherfucking girls, okay? She one of the girls, because let me tell you something about the trade. The trade will motherfucking, <laughs> the trade will take your car, will nut at you first. Take your car. Even though you may not have his baby, you pregnant. <laughs> Leave you and run your motherfucking credit up to the ceiling. Okay? I got it. I said, damn. You know, I was looking at it like I was really convinced. So go, here, go, here go my next post. I said, no matter how messy this bitch is, this was her destiny. No tea, no shade. I salute Wendy, Wendell, Bartholomew, Orenthal, Rufus Clyde, Theodis Pookie, L. Dover, James and the Giant Peach, Hezekiah Walker Williams Sr. I put this on my Instagram. I, I said this, you know, I said she's exactly where she is by divine purpose. Now, a lot of times people don't, you don't believe in the divine, you don't believe in, in divinity and the divine purpose of things or whatever. But when I'm sitting there looking at the looking at the way that her whole life was orchestrated, you know, this is from her, from her, her voice orchestrated in front of me. I'm like, this whole entire situation was definitely, you know, from divine purpose. And then I watched each person that she met from, from the gentleman, from, uh, 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 I don't know all them people name, bitch. I don't really give a fuck about all them people. It was just all them niggas. So all them niggas that she was meeting that were, that were stars and, and uh, rappers and all of this type of stuff. Like, you know, God placed her in, certain positions and then certain things and i don't know if, that, if you could say god you don't know because but then let's talk about it is god messy i have questions and i'm going to ask this question and, I, and maybe you guys could 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 jump in and help me out with it i'm, I'm going to open the last just to my patreon so you know my patreon is going to come on here and they're going to help me chop it up is he messy because you look at a lot of things that are like blessed and like really really move through the through the system of this place you know because it she, her whole thing was set up in a divine a divine purposely divinely set up because i'm sitting there looking like you know well listen i know god is a jealous god but this is this this is, but here's the thing right well dark Light cannot exist without dark. Dark cannot exist without light. You, you get what I'm saying? And when you really look at the whole grand scheme of the situation, and you and, and, and you, we know that she's messy. Like, she ain't regular messy. The bitch is super, 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 super duper, super, super, super duper messy. She's actually toned down a lot of the mess that she was because of me looking at her younger than that bitch was messy. And we don't even have to talk about all the, the coke that she snorted. Bitch, that whole... 
you better have kept that bitch off out of the, the white sands of Peru, bitch, or it would have been nothing last, honey. <laughs> I know she may have Graves' disease, and I'm not making fun of the Graves' disease, but bitch, it was some of that coat that got her eyes leaning back like that. Her bitch, that coat got her eyes fat, Joe, and leaning back all the way like this, bitch. That's what her eyes are still stuck like that. And that coat is real heavy on her motherfucking ass like that. So my thing is, like, something had to be blessed in the whole situation. Something because the lady has moved through or, or. I don't know. I don't want to say certain things because that's not my place. You know, that's not my place. I'm not God. And that's not my place to put anything. But I do. I will say that, you know, her whole situation was definitely to me, in my opinion, was definitely divinely uh, uh, set up. Well, you could, you could say maybe she was put through a, a rape test or something like that. And I mean, she lost three kids that she had. Well, she she aborted one. She aborted she aborted one, and then she couldn't have. She didn't. She lost three, and then she finally had a, a son. She really wanted a daughter. The last one that was born was a stillborn in her, and then she got with her husband Kevin. And let me tell y'all something, okay? Y'all don't want to listen to me. Y'all don't want to understand me, but. Anytime people get into relationships when they're growing as a star, one of two things will happen. Either it will destroy you or it will destroy you. <laughs> we look at how many times Mary J. Blige have been in a relationship with a nigga and then she, this last nigga she done made, she made him her manager. Boom. It didn't destroy her, but it's just like, girl, y'all don't need a baker. <laughs> Like how as successful women who who come in, they've they made money off their own. Look like that's why I don't even talk about super. Like super, super said, she's a successful woman that 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 loves men and you know she likes to date. And my whole thing is I don't think that there'll be a man that's really, you know, right for her if he's not above her. And it's there are times that you're not gonna find a man if when you make it millions of dollars or you make it, you know, money like this and he's not above you. If he ain't above you, you get what I'm saying? In in, in that situation, jealousy starts. Hello, jealousy. You it, then he starts spending your motherfucking money. Cause that nigga spent her money and bought that bitch a seven hundred and sixty-five thousand dollar house. Wait, he bought. He bought her. He bought that girl, the mistress. Oh, oh. Who ended up having a daughter from him. Now, when I sat there and I watched Wendy uh, on that documentary afterwards, and I watched her cry, I mean, that bitch cried, cried, cried. And she just, it was just like moments that she just was like, and then he, what happened was he said to me, oh, God. <laughs> and it was just like a, like I was really sitting there watching it. In a roller coaster of, of emotions with her, I was like, "Bitch, this man really fucked you up. You li you really allowed this man to seep in and fuck you up like this. Spent your money. He made her feel as though he was her protector. And I do believe that there was, I do believe that there were moments in their relationship that he he actually was her protector. Like he was her, like he protect, like he did." Here's what I found out about Wendy. And Wendy, if you ever get an if I ever get an opportunity to sit with you, me and you gonna chop it up, bitch. And I mean, we gonna chop it up like real ass niggas. Chop it up. Cause you was, I feel like she was messy towards the queens because she used a lot of the, she used a lot of the outing stories, a lot of outing uh, stuff like outing these people or whatever, which, which people are always, which we're gonna talk about something else after this, which people always sensationalize the outing of gay. Gay relations, trans relations, whatever. Like that's so it just draws news. Who's doing it? The word on the street is, you know, you people say shit like that, and, they, and everybody rushing to hear whether it's the truth or a lie. But when I'm sitting there watching it, I found out that Wendy was she she struggled with weight. She was she felt that she felt now I could be wrong, but this is what I saw. I felt that she was a she felt she was ugly. She felt she was ugly. She was fat. She was unattractive. And it seems as though her parents played a part in, you know, telling her how unattractive she was 
weight wise and this is why i'd be out there telling y'all is watching me that's that's maddie marbers and stuff like that i tell y'all bitch stay on top of how you feel about yourself hey now puss asshole make me feel no kind of way no matter how much they call me fat no matter how much they call me unattractive how much i look like y'all bitches can't get under my skin like that none of you motherfuckers and anytime a bitch jump online and they say fuck shit about me and you puss assholes crawl crowd around that to hear that shit with I don't have to prove none of y'all bitches. Uh, I may, bitch, I may subliminally read. I may openly read. I may do that. Like, But I don't really give a fuck. Because at the end of the day, I know what goes on with me. But a lot of times, people are not really built for that whole, that whole situation. They're not really built for that. And I really believe that she was hurt. She was hurt. She was hurt by the way she, she's looked. She was hurt by the way she was treated by men. Because when you a big ass bitch, or you got... No, I'm just being real, Mo. When you a big motherfucker, or you a fat bitch, or you are on it, or you or you might have been called ugly, and men come through, you gonna let them niggas come through and dick you down for free? See, this is why I'm big and pretty. They got to run me that. <laughs> but bitch, so if if a bitch, you know, self esteem ain't on ain't on level, motherfucking ten. <laughs> You know niggas gonna be able to come over there and whisper and and, 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 and and say some shit in your ear and tell you how bad and going. You supposed to know you bad and going just all motherfucking ready. But you know, when you got a hundred people around you telling saying shit like that, you know, it does fuck you up. However, let's be real. She, this is what I interpreted, okay? She was unattractive. She was she she struggled with her weight. Um Men, she know men only wanted her for her pussy. That's why she ran out there and got no big gigantic ass titties, you know. So look, because when you look at it, it's like, look at me. Look at her whole thing was look at me. Hear, see me. Look at me. You know, what she did was for me is she created an entire, she didn't fit in into the world. So she created an entire world and made the world fit into hers. And this is what gives her power. This is what empowers her. This is what gives her strength. And at the, at the mercy of being messy, she created her entire, she created a whole world that people had to pay her to get in. You understand what I'm saying? Because she never fit in into the world. She never did. So she created her own world and made the world come to her. Now, I did see a new statement that came out this morning where uh, because she's she, she, she's allegedly, you know, or according to her, she um she was fucking met the man one night. They had a one night stand, something about uh, uh, they were smoking weed. And then she went over there and I guess she started bathing him. And. <laughs> Child, she was bathing that nigga. I would have bathed met the man too now. <laughs> now I ain't finna sit up here in front. I liked that little sleepy eye. That little sleepy eye he had. He used to have. He used to have contact with the eyewear. I don't know that eye. You that old dead eye over there. He, <laughs> he, he, he had that fatty wop eye. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> And so with me, when I see him with that fatty wop eye, that shit was sexy to me. Old fatty wop eye. You're all I need to get by. Ah, bitch, I'd be like, yes, I'd have bathed his ass too before I sucked the dick because he was dirty dick trade. So, yes, I would have put him in the tub and bathed his ass first before I sucked the dick. I would have. I don't blame you, Wendy. <laughs> At that time, he was definitely dirty dick, so I definitely would have laid his ass down in the tub and put some soap and water so that I know. His wife spoke about it. Yes, she did. His wife late. His wife came forth and he started. She she read her like I was looking. We didn't get all this stuff this morning, Mo, because you had to go get this little piece of equipment. Then this got the stuff looking so clear. It looks so clear, Mo. You ain't trying to do nothing, but you're doing something. <laughs> But, you know, uh, his wife uh, w was reading her saying that, you know, that, that she's messy. And, but out of, through, the, through the wife's whole statement, um, when I looked, when I saw it, the wife didn't say that it didn't happen. She just read her. 
she laid her motherfucking ass out, but she never said that bet the man ain't slide his dick in and out of that monkey pussy. Well, at least, but that means she already knew that too. But you remember she remember that time when she when uh, Wendy Williams said that that uh, Method Man Method Man's wife had cancer and he knew immediately because uh, he said sources said because uh, he was on interview and he said when, you, when your wife got cancer he said yeah that Wendy fuck you bitch I was like oh and and it's like how did you get the tea Wendy did what she needed to do. She took that dirty nigga home after some kind of situation they was having. They was some they was in a box seat somewhere. And that nigga probably was smelling like Bunky Hennessy and shit. <laughs> and that pussy ass hoe know that she liked to mix coke and weed together. And they both went somewhere Bunky. And listen, I'm not a girl that does drugs, but I have had a sexual encounter off of some ecstasy. I didn't enjoy it. You know, I'll tell that story on the After Dog Show. If I haven't already told it, I'll tell it again. But I had it. Uh, some I had an encounter, and you know I don't like sex in the in the space. Like I like maybe a little bit of drunken sex, like that. But I don't like all that bullshit, all that high weed, boom, boonking. And if for y'all don't know, y'all that ain't from Miami, boonking means coke and weed together. You heard Trina say, "Hell no, nah, I don't want to call it no motherfucking trick." He over there smelling like boonking Hennessy and shit. That means weed and cocaine together. So for me, yes, yeah, she probably had his dirty dick ass up there in the booth, and they both of them, both of them bitches probably smelled like Book and Hennessy. And he took her motherfucking, she took his ass back to wherever they went to, and she she put his dirty ass down there in the tub. And let me, I'm not reading about being dirty because I love me a piece of dirty, dirty piece of trade. I love me a dirty dick trade every now and then. You get what I'm saying? One of the ones, and I don't mean dirty dick as far as dirty, nasty, low down. Sick dick. I'm talking about dirty dick as far as street trade that you know. He, hey, come on, mama. Oh, no, don't tell me that's down trying to get breakfast now. Don't tell me I'm a desk. I'm talking about dirty dick trade. Who done been down to the thing? Slanging dope all night, bitch. Writing rap lyrics, bitch. You know, trying to put them together. And met the man one on Instagram, Facebook. He won that type of trade. Like these types of trades. Now these pretty trades, you know. With what? These pretty trades, bro. <laughs> and they don't really be trade. These pretty butch queens that be on here on their Instagrams. I ain't used to that kind of boy. I'm just not being figuring this kind of computer boy out. I'm like, okay. So for the past 15 years I've been online, I'm like, okay, this is the computer boy. Because I'm used to the, to the ratchet ass fucking trade. Bitch, that you got to take home. From the pod and put his ass down in the tub and wash him thoroughly <laughs> in the inner crevices of his ass and nut sack, bitch, or you'll be blown away from that stench that comes from that ball sack. So you know. Um. Also, when I was watching the, the documentary, I heard Wendy say, uh, "Kevin, Kevin, Kevin never hit me. I mean, we might have argued, and and he might have." Uh, and uh, something she said about he might have argued and I might have fell and hurt my arm. I was like, bitch, don't come over here. Now, when do you tell it all this shit? You saying all this shit, but don't come over here doing this pepper shit from the salt and pepper. Because I just read <laughs> salt and pepper. If, if you're not going to tell me that Trish bust your ass, if I, did not, if I can't see the hand connect to your motherfucking eye, and blacken your eye, bitch. Or if I can't see the bitch take a baller and come across your fucking forehead, don't show me him getting mad, getting enraged, and throwing a plate or busting a wine. I don't want to see that. I want to see him busting your ass. I want to see him busting your ass so that I can be mad, mad at him. So I can be angry with him for doing these things to you. I want to see this, bitch. So don't get over here now and tell all of this situation that went on and then you start scaling down. If Kevin be, I believe Kevin beat your ass because Kevin was dirty Detroit too. She said she liked it to trade. She's a queen, a damn a punk. Even if she have a pussy, she might be a punk with a pussy. But she said on the thing that she liked the roughneck ass, ragged ass trade. 
And so when it got down to that point right there, when she started talking about the dead motherfucking, he, 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 Kevin, Kevin talked loud to me and then, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, and then Kevin talked, I was like, wait a minute, is this bitch done went crazy? Bitch, well, I tell you, that bitch had me up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down with all the emotions that was going on on the thing because it was just like she would just bust out into a evil, an evil cry. You ain't watched it yet, Mo. I watched it twice. I watched, I, I watched it because I needed to see what was going on. Oh, now let me tell y'all something. Whoever that nigga was that they casted to play Charlemagne looked at a mess. 